Hello everyone and welcome back. Now, in the past few videos we've been talking about infinite domain problems and we've really sort of focused on uh, the heat and the wave equations again. And this is because they're amenable to methods such as the Fourier transform. What I'd like to do in this video is slightly change gear and I would like to focus on another method of solving quasi-linear partial differential equations. So we're going to learn a new partial differential equation in this video. And we're going to focus on what's called the method of characteristics. So this is going to eventually lead us into a discussion of shock waves and shock formation in partial differential equations. Now, here's where I want to start. I want to start with the wave equation. Now, I told you I'm going to give you a new partial differential equation, uh, but bear with me for a second, okay? Imagine I've got the wave equation and I'll sort of, I'll write it like this. So I'll put everything on, on one side. Now, if you can use your imagination for a second, this kind of looks like a difference of squares. In fact, it is a difference of squares if you consider these things to be differential operators. And in one sense, you could factor these equations so that they could read like this. So plus or minus C partial, partial X, and then partial T U, partial T uh, minus or plus, be careful, and then partial U, partial X is equal to zero, right? So this is just a difference of squares. You know, A squared minus B squared is equal to A plus B times A minus B, okay? And take a look here, the partial is applied uh, to u only in this case, this is just uh, sums or differences of, of partial derivatives, okay? Now, essentially what you can see here is that um, you're essentially, you know, loosely by solving this thing equal to zero, you're sort of solving this piece equal to zero, right? So what you could do is you could say, let's introduce maybe uh, some intermediate variables. So let's say let w equal to the partial of u um, with respect to t minus c partial u partial x and let's let v be the other one okay so partial u partial t plus c partial u partial x okay so that's just taking care of this term right i'm either calling it w or v depending on the plus or minus here and essentially what that does is the factored equation gives you two uh, what we'll call first order wave equations, okay? So the W equation, that's with the minus here, so I'm gonna get the plus on this side, so I get partial W, partial T, plus C, partial W, partial X is equal to zero, or partial V, partial T, minus C, partial V, partial X is equal to zero, okay? So now look what I've done. I've taken the wave equation, I've produced two new partial differential equations, and in particular, it's first order in both derivatives, space and time, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on just solving equation one, since equation two is basically the same thing, right? The only thing that, that differentiates them is the plus and the minus here. Uh, you'll see whenever we finish up with the solution of one, you'll see that you can easily sort of transpose this onto the solution of two as well, okay? So here I have a new partial differential equation, right? This is completely different. It's not a heat equation, no second derivative here. It's not a wave equation, no second derivative here. It is a linear first order partial differential equation. So here's what I would like to do. I wanna find a solution W in terms of space and time so that this thing is equal to zero. Now, years of working on these equations has, has sort of led us to the following method of solving these things. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to track the solution as a moving observer. So let's imagine I'm gonna move through space, right, x is space, according to some prescribed time, okay? So I'm gonna track the solution w of x of t just in time. I'm gonna sort of follow it through space as I move on in time. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Well, first of all, if I take the derivative of the solution of this equation, assuming it sort of exists, in this case, I get a total derivative. So I get partial w, partial t, and then the chain rule, 
comes out and I get dx by dt and then partial w partial x. And what I can see here is that this thing could be equal to zero so long as, so I could say this is equal to zero if and only if dx by dt is equal to c, right? Because that would just give me the original equation that I started with. So essentially here, this would give me that x is equal to c times t plus, uh, say, some initial offput. Uh, we can call it x naught. And essentially what you're saying here, okay, let's track this back for a second. This and this equal to zero tells me that if I track my solution in space according to time, according to this thing right here, the solution's not going to change. Okay, so imagine I'm walking through space at a prescribed time and watching the solution move through time. If I walk at exactly the speed c, I don't see any change in the solution. Okay, so really what's happening here? Well, let's take a look at this. Here's our space. Here is, let's say, our time. Along these lines, right, these lines look like a whole bunch of just parallel lines. I know that I'm not doing the most amazing job of drawing this perfectly parallel. But along each one of these lines, which is just differentiated by the starting point x naught, right, w is constant on each line. Each one of these lines are called the, a characteristic. These are a family of parallel characteristics. I know my picture is not very parallel. That's okay. You're, uh, I mean, you're an experienced mathematician watching this video. I mean, you, you know what I'm trying to do here, right? And essentially what this tells you is that W propagates It propagates as a wave with, spe with speed c. Okay, so essentially, if you start with an initial profile at time zero, all that thing is doing is being pushed up and to the right. For example, if c is positive, right? So it's just going mm, like this, up and to the right through space and time. So the question is, What's the general solution here, right? Well, and maybe this will make things a little bit more clear. But if we have an initial condition, let's imagine um, I've got, you know, some original function P of X that was my initial condition. X is unbounded in this case, so X belongs to R. Well, since W is constant, on characteristics, which is, I just mean this line. This would tell me that W of uh, X comma T is equal to W of X naught comma zero, wherever I started, right, at time zero, which is just P of X naught. And now what I can do is I can rearrange this equation to get that w as a function of space and time is equal to just the original profile p and then x minus ct, right? So when t is equal to zero, I get the initial condition back. And essentially all that's happening here is I'm just shifting the original solution. So imagine maybe p looks like a little Gaussian, for example, right? So this is my p of x function. All that's happening, if I run the clock, if I allow time to go forward, everything is just moving forward at exactly the same speed of ct. It's moving to the right because c is positive. Now, how does this connect back to equation two? Well, of course, you can see here that equation two is just gonna be a leftward moving 
wave, right? Because it's going to pl put a plus here, right? Uh, 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 sorry, it's going to put a minus here, and that will put a plus right here. So in that case, the initial condition is just being shifted the other way. So these two equations are essentially the same, but the val this plus or minus, this is a rightward traveling wave solution, right? It's traveling, whereas this is a leftward traveling wave solution. Let's do an example. Okay, let's consider, here's one that we can consider. Let's consider the partial of W plus two, so here my value of C is equal to two, partial W partial X. We already know what the solution is, but the most important thing here is to ask ourselves, you know, well, what would be the initial profile? Well, here's my initial profile, zero, for x less than zero. It's gonna be 4x for zero less than x less than one. Uh, and then it's going to be uh, zero for x bigger than one. Okay, so what does, this solu what does this look like? It is basically flat. This is your 4x part. And then it has a discontinuity at x equal to one. Right? And I want you to remark on something. This thing is not continuous, right? It's not smooth, it's not differentiable, right? Uh, but that doesn't matter, right? This original profile can be as funky and ugly as you want. This could be the Weierstrass function for all you care. All that matters is this solution, it doesn't smooth anybody out like the heat equation does. All it does is it takes your initial condition and pushes it forward. I don't care how ugly it was to start with, all it's doing is transporting that thing to the right. So essentially what you get here, we get that the characteristics, well, they're given by x minus 2t is equal to x naught, which is just any real number. And so thus, your solution is just the original profile translated. So let's take a look at what this would look like. It's going to be 0 when x is less than 2t, right? So that's just this barrier sort of moving at the speed 2t. Then it's going to be 4 times x minus 2t when uh, 2t is less than x, which is less than 2t plus 1. That's just this whole profile moving, this little wedge piece moving with it. And it's going to be 0 beyond that outer extreme. This 2t plus 1 is, uh, sorry, is less than x. Pardon me. Right? And that's just this rightward edge moving to the right. Again, it looks complicated, right? You might have to do a little bit of uh, tinkering to sort of see exactly where I got some of these pieces. But all I want you to notice is if you ran the movie of this thing evolving in time, it's just the original profile getting pushed over to the right. All right, this method of characteristics actually genera generalizes to much more complicated and even nonlinear partial differential equations. Let's take a look at another example. And I'm gonna step up the complexity here. Let's look at this case. Partial x is equal to 2tw. And of course, let's just define an initial profile to be p of x, okay? All right. So we can basically follow the same steps that we just had previously, and we can define the characteristics in the same way. The characteristics are going to be, this is sort of our C of T term. You want your movement in X to be 
equal to, or the speed of the movement in X to be equal to this speed right here. So you get this little ordinary differential equation. Actually, in this case, it's just a, a simple integration problem. So this tells us that the characteristics are defined like this. Okay, so now look at these things. These are not lines, right? If you take your, your space and time, these things are nice little cubic curves. And the last piece of this, if you have this assumption of the characteristics, this will tell you that d, d, w, uh, d, d, t of w of x of t comma t has to be equal to this piece right here now, t, uh, 2t w. And again, you can solve this thing, right? So this is going to be w is equal to we have some constant of integration k, e, and then uh, t squared, e to the power of t squared. So just sort of, this is a separable differential equation if you just assume that this is a function of t only because x is a function of t as well, then you get this thing right here. So the question is, how does this fit together, right? This seems like it's a little bit more complicated. Do I keep the original profile for all of time? Or do these sort of nonlinear terms actually start kind of crunching things up? Does it make things a little bit more complicated? Let's take a look. Remember, by definition, we want to satisfy, satisfying, we have this thing. So our initial condition, x naught of zero is equal to p of x naught. Then we get, this is gonna give us that k is equal to p of x naught, right? Because that's just this term, put t equal to zero in here. And so that the k term here is now going to be wherever p is evaluated at the initial point. Okay, so now what happens to the solution? Well, this tells me that w of x comma t, this thing is now equal to p of x naught e to the t squared. But what is x naught? x naught, if I rearrange this equation right here, this tells me that I get the original profile translated as a nonlinear rate now, and then e to the t squared. Okay, so it's not just the original profile, right? This is the original profile being translated, but now it's being translated again at a, at a sort of nonlinear rate, right? So the sort of characteristics look like this now, cubic functions. But also you've got this term on the end, which is coming from, you know, one way to think about this is a, a forcing term, for example, right? And it's causing the solution to blow up and it blows up fast, right? So one way you can think about this, maybe if you're an engineer or a physicist, you're sort of pumping energy and a lot of energy into the equation and it's causing this thing to blow up. So first of all, the profile is, is translating, it's sort of accelerating away, right? But also it's sort of blowing way up. Acceleration from this term, blow up from this term. Okay, when we come back in the next video, we're gonna look at how the method of characteristics can be applied to solve the wave equation as well, where all of this started. So I'll see you all in the next video, everyone.